Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today I'm going to relook at a topic that we've covered in the past and that is how to rig a mechanical piston, uh, this time in Blender 2.5 since the previous one was 2.49, um, but how to rig the piston such that you can then animate it with relative ease. But in this case, we're going to take it a little bit further, as you can see on screen here. We're actually going to be rigging the arm of this, this kind of backhoe, or the excavator, to then be able to animate very easily, where the only thing we have to animate are these three bones here. This one, this one, and this one, and then all of the pistons and any other machinery will just follow right along as it should. So this is actually a relatively simple setup. We're going to be looking at um, a couple of different constraints usage and then just some general bones and whatnot. Shouldn't be, take too long. Today we're only going to be focusing on the arm of the excavator just to save some time and kind of narrow our focus down. And like I said, the main point that we're looking at today is how to rig these pistons to automatically behave as they should. So going back to the 3D view real quick, let me just show you what I have. Here is our, our final control rig basically where we have three bones that are each set uh, as our animation bones. So for example if I grab say this bone here and just go ahead and rotate it you'll notice that the pistons right in here all follow appropriately. Same thing if I grab this one and rotate it this piston follows. You also notice that I have limit rotation constraints on these bones such that I'm not able to you know take the arm too far such that the piston would retract from itself or uh, intersect with itself. And then lastly on this one here I've also set it up with this rack and pinion mechanism to then again behave correctly allowing us to animate this realistically with very little work. So let me show you a little bit of how this works before we actually jump into rigging. Uh, what I've got set up is I have two armature layers. The first one are the control bones, or basically the bones to animate, and the second layer are all of the, the actual rig bones that are doing the work. So first on this one here, there's actually three bones here, or excuse me, four bones. First we have the main piston bone, and this is the one that actually um, does the movement, although no vertices are actually def, uh, assigned to it. And then we have a, a tip bone, or excuse me, the tip bone, and then also the base bone for the piston. And on this one, we also have a piston control. So if we go into edit mode, we can see that we first have this one here, and then we have the base and the tip, which are both parented, at, uh, disconnected though, to the main piston bone, and then we have the main piston control. So these are all set up though with a single constraint on this bone here using a stretch to constraint actually that is then pointing to this one such that as I rotate this you'll notice that this bone or the tip of my main piston bone, the piston 01, is always trying to stretch to the tip of this bone such that I rotate it, it automatically tracks to it. And since the tip of the piston here, which is actually where the vertices are assigned, is parented to this one and is um, inheriting the rotation, then it goes ahead and just follows right along with it. It's also inheriting the, the location as well, but not the scale. And that's pretty much it. So, you know, doing this, uh, we're able to go ahead and do the same thing with each of them. So this one, again, is using the exact same technique. Uh, this time the piston control is right down here. You'll notice that I've got these piston control bones basically going from the base of the actual joint to then the tip of the piston. So in this case, this one down here is going from the joint of the arm up to the piston rod. And what this allows you to do is just very easily get accurate deformation within the pistons. Uh, I originally tried doing this with the base of this right at the piston as well, and it tended to get a little screwy from time to time, and so doing it like this you just ensure good accuracy. So these two, this one and this one, are both identical in their setup, but then this one is just a little bit different. You notice that this bone here still has the regular uh, stretch to constraint, which is then pointing to, if I can remember where it's at, this one is pointing to the bucket hinge 01, which is actually this one here. So I've got uh, one hinge, two hinge, and three hinges. 
And these ones, you'll notice this one is copying the rotation of the arm bucket, which is, if we go back to the layers, we'll just enable both these, is this one here. So this bone is actually tracking these two. So these two are both following this one, as you can see, uh, with the constraint. So it's following the arm bucket. So as I rotate this, this one rotates as well. This one then is parented to the hinge 02, which is this one, and it's told to track to the, the tail of this one here, or maybe it's the head. Either way, it's then tracking to this bone such that these all stay in perfect order. Now, something that I'll give you some forewarning on that I was having some trouble with initially, and I'm sure that a lot of you out there, you know, if you're a mechanical engineer or something like that, you may be laughing about this, but in order for this to work well, these really need to be of equal length. Now you could do these as long as um, these two were the same length and these two were the same length, it would all work. But you know, if you've got four separate lengths or three separate lengths, then obviously it's not going to work. And <laughs> admittedly, it sounds a bit silly now, but whenever I was building this, I didn't really think about that because I just built the model in the past. You know, some of you may actually recognize this model from our Christmas present uh, a couple years ago. And, you know, I didn't even think about it at the time. I wasn't planning to rig it. And so I hadn't actually set it up for that. And I kept rigging it and I was like, why is this not working? And then I realized, oh, well, they're separate links. You know, I've got like four different links in here. And so, of course, it's not going to work. But as long as these pieces are all the same length, it'll work very easily. Um, and then other than that, this is all the same setup. So let's go ahead and rig this. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just hit Control tab to leave edit mode. I'm going to take this rig and I'm just going to move it to layer 11 by hitting M and then tapping this one here just to get it out of there. I'm also then going to go ahead and go over to the modifiers tab and I have a armature modifier here and I'm just going to go ahead and disable that one for now but I'm not going to delete it. I'm just going to leave it in place this way you know if we in the midst of this test or of this rigging if we ever need to go in and test it for to see you know if we can't get something working, we can test it with the old one to see what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and start by adding my first bone, and I'm going to do this by hitting Shift C or Shift S and cursor to selected. I want to set it right at the base of this bone or of the the arm, and I'm just going to hit Shift A, add in an armature and a single bone. And the first bones that I'm going to add are the three arm bones. So I've got an arm bone from here to here, here to here, and then the bucket as well. So I first need to go ahead and position this bone in edit mode uh, right at the center of this joint here. So, you know, just right about in there. Then I'll select the tip and I'm just going to hit G to grab it and pull it over here to this center, just somewhere right in there. You know, with this model, since this model is not crazy precise, you know, and you'll notice that some of these aren't even actually perfect circles, I think, in some cases. Uh, perhaps I got a little bit lazy. We don't have to make these absolutely precise, but you know, the more accurate your model, the more accurate you want your armature to be as well. And then we can go ahead and just hit E to extrude, take this down, and we'll position it right in here. And then we'll do this one more time, just about like this for the bucket. Uh, something right in there will work just fine. Okay, now let's go ahead and name these. And so this one, I'm going to go ahead uh, from the bone panel here. I'm just going to name this arm 0 0.01, arm 0 0.02, and arm 0 0.03. That way we've got a consistent naming convention that then we can stick with and always refer back to. Next, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little easier to see by going over to the armature panel and just enabling x-ray so that we can always see our bones through the arm. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and uh, work on the, well actually no, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead and work on the first piston. We're not going to worry about rigging or assigning the mesh at all until we actually get the bones built. Assigning the mesh is actually the easy part. So the next thing that I want to do is to go ahead and add in the piston bones. So first I'll position my cursor right about here and yeah, that'll be good. I'm going to hit shift A, it adds in a new bone automatically. I can just grab the tip which is already selected and just position it right at the top of the cylinder, right in there. Okay, I'm then going to go ahead and extrude that again, just something like this. 
and just enough that I can see it very easily. It doesn't have to be an exact angle. The, literally all this is, we care about this is the fact that the base is centered on the tip of this bone. So then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with this one as well. And in fact, you know, something we could do to make this a little easier to see is if we just, you know, put these at an alternate angle, say something like this, grab this one as well. That way it's very easy to see that, okay, this one is the base, this is the tip, and then this is the regular cylinder bone. Whereas you'll notice in on my other rig, this one, when in certain viewing modes, you know, we can't even actually see this bone down here. And so by doing it like this, we can actually avoid that. So the next step is I need to go ahead and name each of these. So I'm first going to go ahead and name this one. Oops, not the armature. I want to name the bone. And this will be piston point uh, zero one. This one then will be the piston underscore tip dot zero one. And this one, or actually, you know what? Just so that these stay uh, grouped together in any list, let's go ahead and name this piston point zero one underscore tip. And then the same thing, this one will be piston point zero one underscore base. And then what I also want to go ahead and do is disconnect these, uh, which this one here you can see is still connected. So we just need to disable the connected option such that it can move freely, but it's still parented. This will make the, the stretch to work better. Same thing with this one. I want to go ahead and parent this to the piston point zero one and make sure it's still unconnected. And then on each of these, just so that the stretch two doesn't mess things up, even though I'm not sure if it affects these at all, we're going to go ahead and disable the inherent scale. This way it's only going to grab the rotation and the location. So for example, if we go into pose mode by hitting control tab, and if I scale this, you'll notice that these bones don't change their scale at all, but their position still stays intact. Same thing, you notice if I rotate it, it follows. If I move it, it follows. But if I scale, the size does not change. And that's exactly what I want because I don't want the cylinder itself to actually change shape. Uh, because we're actually going to be assigning parts of the mesh to this bone and this bone. So next up is I need to go ahead and add in the control bone. So I'm just going to select the base of the arm point zero one here, and I'm going to extrude it just like this. I'll just put it up somewhere in here and I'm going to select this tip, hit shift S and cursor to selected. This way I can just reselect this tip with the right mouse button and hit shift S and selection the cursor. That way they're all positioned exactly. I can go ahead on this bone. You'll notice it's not parented to anything, which is fine. And I'm going to name this piston 0.01 underscore control. And I'm, I say underscore control, even though it doesn't actually control it, you know, that's not the bone that we're actually going to be animating. You know, we're actually animating just this one. Um, this, the control just helps name it in the sense that this is the bone that is going to define how this piston interacts. And we may need to parent this to the main arm bone. And actually, yeah, we are going to go ahead and parent it to arm point zero one, just so that we have a single base. Um, now, in, it would probably be good practice to say add in one more big bone, something like this, that then would rotate the entire armature. But in this case, since we're not worrying about the rest of the excavator, uh, which would also have its own rig, or would, would also have part of the rig that would include the base, I'm not going to worry about adding in a base bone for today. Just realize that in most cases that would be a good practice where you have one base bone that doesn't deform anything, but all bones follow it. In this case, my arm point zero one is kind of my base bone. Okay, so I need to, I've got that parented, that's all good. And let's go ahead, before moving on to the other parts of our, our rig, let's go ahead and get these working. So the first step, we're gonna hit tab to leave edit mode, which leaves us in pose mode since that's where we were before. And first, you know, let's just make sure if we move this, it's all good. If we move this, check. And if we move this, check. Okay, so all we should need to do is select this bone here, go over to the constraints. We're going to add in a stretch to constraint and the target is going to be our armature 0 0.01, uh, yeah, 0 0.01 as you can see down here. And the bone is going to be our piston 0 0.01 underscore control. So you'll notice that some things have happened. So first off, right now, if we move this, you'll notice that it stretches perfectly. But 
you'll notice that it's also pointing towards the base of the bone. So we need just to take the head tail slider, just move it all the way up here, which you'll notice makes it work. And if we now rotate this, that all follows along, which is all fine and dandy, except for one problem in that it's stretched way up here. So this is where we just need to click reset and that will take the bone back to its original length, allowing us to then rotate this just like so. Okay, so you can kind of see how that's starting to work. And actually I realized one problem is that this bone actually does need to be parented to our arm point zero one. So I can just go over to the bone panel, choose arm point zero one, such that now when I rotate this, this bone then follows and makes the constraint work. So that's literally all we're gonna do to rig it. Uh, the next step would simply be to go ahead and apply the mesh. Now I'm not going to assign anything to the mesh just yet because I wanna be able to make sure that when I do add the armature modifier using empty groups, uh, that it will actually go in and out automatically add all of our vertex groups to the mesh. Otherwise, I will have to add them manually. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to select all these pieces and I'm just going to hit, uh, no, we'll go ahead and do this manually. I'm gonna first position my cursor right here. I'm gonna zoom in, get it a little bit more accurate, hit Shift A, oops, uh, hit Tab to go into edit mode, then I'll hit Shift A, add a new bone, take this up to the tip, somewhere right about in there. I'll go ahead and extrude that tip and extrude that base. And then I want to go ahead and say, select this tip here, and I'm gonna extrude it. Remember, this is gonna be my control bone starting here, going to here, so I'll select this, hit Shift S, cursor to selected. Then I'll select this tip, and I just wanna snap it right to that cursor. So I can just hit Shift S using the snap menu and slap snap the selection to the cursor. So now that's positioned perfectly. And now you notice that the parent on this is already correct, such that if I were to go in here and rotate this, it would follow correctly. And then I want to go ahead and rename these. So this will be piston.02 underscore tip. This will be piston.02. And this will be piston.02 underscore base. And piston.02 underscore control. I also want to make sure that these are not connected. I need to set the parent on this to be piston.02. This one does not need to be connected. And then this one, the parent is arm01. So if I go ahead, hit control tab, go back in, or excuse me, just hit tab, go back in pose mode, I can grab this bone, follows just nicely, grab this bone, you can see that all works. And we're just about there. So let's go ahead and set up these constraints before we you know, go on to the next step. And on this one, again, I'm gonna use the stretch two. So I'll grab the stretch two. This is gonna be the armature point zero one. And the bone will be uh, the piston point zero two underscore control. And it's gonna stretch to the tail and we'll click reset. So now if I rotate this, that all works beautifully. Now we have a problem though. This bone right here, or this piston, basically controls when this arm rotates. So effectively what I want to happen is for when this bone rotates like this to move this arm, this piston should, should then go back. And if we check out my other rig, you'll notice that what I have uh, set up is this bone is set to inherit the rotation of our arm 0 0.02. So what we just need to do is change the parent on this one from arm 0 0.01 to arm 0 0.02. Oops. First we need to disable the connected, then arm 0 0.02. And now if we rotate this, you can see that works beautifully. Cool. Okay. So that sets up that piston as well. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. So we'll hit tab to go back in edit mode, position our cursor right about here, hit shift A, grab the tip, move it down right about in here. Okay. And then what we need to do is to go ahead and create these three bones. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna position this right here or the cursor there. I'm gonna hit Shift A, add in a bone. 
pull this down here. I'm going to go ahead and snap this. I'm going to hit Shift A, or oops, undo that. Shift S, cursor to selected. I'm going to grab this tip, Shift S, and selection a cursor. And now you may think that, well, now I'll just extrude this. Well, that's not going to work, though, because, again, we need these to be the same length in order to work well. And, you know, as long as they were pretty close to the same length, we could probably get it to work. Uh, but that's not quite the way that we want to do it. And, you know, since we don't really have a length, you know, we can't tell how long this bone is unless we are to orientate it correctly and then check out the Z values or something like that. What we're going to do is just hit Shift D, move this in here, Shift S, selection a cursor, which will snap the base of the bone. We'll hit period to rotate around the cursor. Rotate this down about like that. And we can actually see that maybe these are not very well placed, so maybe I'll replace this one. I'll delete this one. Select the tip, shift F, selection a cursor, or excuse me, shift S. Maybe reposition those a little bit. Then I will grab this, shift S, cursor. Here we go. Now, I'll shift D, selection a cursor, rotate it around, then I'll position the cursor right here, shift S, cursor to selected, shift D, selection a cursor, and then rotate this around. So this way all three bones have kept the exact same length to allow this to work very nicely. Now you also need to be sure that the rotation here stays fairly accurate, and in this case as long as we get it pretty close I think it'll be good. Okay, now I want to go ahead and change the parents on these, which if, again, we check out our other armature, we can see how the parents were set up. You can see that we've got uh, bone point, or hinge 01 is parented to the second arm. Then we have this one here, again parented to the second arm. And then this one, which is then parented to this tip here. So we've got hinge 1, hinge 2, hinge 3, and hinge 3 is then parented to this one such that it follows with this one then pointing here. So going back to our regular rig, let's take this, we'll go ahead, we're going to name it, oops, we'll set this parent to arm point zero 02. It's disconnected, uh, and we want to go ahead and name this to uh, bucket underscore hinge point zero 01. We'll go ahead and just copy this. This then will be number two, and this then will be number three. Now, something that we need to do is I want this bone to also follow arm point zero two and disconnected, but currently, you'll notice that if we do this, okay, everything works great, but in order to save a constraint, I want this bone here to follow this one and then point at this one with the stretch 2. So I actually need to reverse these two bones. So I'm going to select this one first. I'll hit W, switch direction. So now the base is on this side, the tip is here, and I'll do the same thing with this one. So now I can go ahead and parent this to my bucket hinge 0, 02. So now this follows here, that follows, oops, let me hit comma to rotate around the individual center. So that follows, they should all follow here. This should be our arm 0, 02. There we go. So now if I grab this, all of those then follow. Okay, cool. So I'm ready to go ahead, extrude, say that out, and that out, and I can go ahead and rename these. This will be piston 0 0.03. This is piston 0 0.03 underscore tip. And then this one is piston 0.03 underscore base and then I just need to add in my control bone and on the control bone let's see where did I place that one before oh in fact I didn't actually use a control bone I just used the hinge as my control bone so on this one it's going to point towards this so I'm gonna grab this here I'm gonna go ahead and choose my con stretch to constraint just like this I'm going to point it at my armature point zero 01, and it's going to go towards bucket hinge zero 01, towards the head. Go ahead and reset just for safe measures. And now if I go ahead and rotate this, you'll notice that stretches very nicely, except that we have a problem. And that problem is two things. First, you'll notice if we grab this bone, this one is beginning all distorted, and this is because it's inheriting the scale of the stretch 
and then this one is not actually inheriting anything because it's not actually parented to the piston 0 0.03 as it should be, which should also not inherit the scale. So now if I grab this, notice that moves quite nicely. And I can rotate this, fantastic. But now what ought to happen is as I rotate this, these then need to follow. So if I rotate this like so, you can see what happens and you can see what happens there. So this bone needs to follow this. So I could go ahead and add in the constraint, point it towards that, or I could just say select this bone, then select this bone, hit control shift C, add constraints with target, which is what control shift C does, and do copy rotation. Now, yes, okay. So now you'll notice that it's gotten all distorted. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to local space and local space, such that it's basically copying the rotation based on its current rotation. So if I now rotate this, you'll notice what's happening. Well, partially it's going the wrong direction. Now there's one of two ways that we can fix this. One way is to go ahead and just invert the rotation axis, or we could go ahead and go over to the armature panel, enable the axes, and we can see that this bone, the x-axis is pointing towards the left, and this one is pointing towards the right. So our axes are reversed. So I'm just gonna hit tab to go into edit mode. With this one, I'm gonna hit control R to go into roll mode and type in 180. You can also find the roll from, well, I guess you can't find it right here. Uh, I thought you could. You can find it here if you go to, oh, maybe not, armature. Ah, bone roll, here we go. So you can set the roll to then rotate it around. And this is best done when you have the axes enabled. Leave that. And now if I rotate this, you'll notice that follows very nicely. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing with this one. Select both, Control Shift C, copy rotation, go over to the constraint, set it to local space. And if you hold down Alt and use your scroll wheel, you can scroll right through menu entries. And that then follows very nicely. And now I just need to grab this one and I'm going to target it towards this one. So I first select my target, then I select the bone I want to add the constraint to, Control Shift C, add in a track two, and go ahead and set it towards, the, uh, well that's weird, because that should be the head and then the tail, so if it's all the way up it should be the tail, but it's working. So now if I grab this, you'll notice that it's pointing very nicely, and for safe measures we should probably set this one to local space as well, I believe, or maybe not. Okay, no, we do want to go and just use world space for this. Okay, so now if we do that, you'll notice everything works very nicely. I can go ahead and rotate this around, although you'll notice that when I do that, this bone is not following correctly, so I need to go ahead and set the parent of it to arm 0 0.02, just like so. So now that all follows nicely. If I grab this, rotates around, I can grab this, and this one too needs to be parented to arm point zero one. If I can go in here, I can close this, I can close the claw, and there we go. So now all I need to do is go in and assign my mesh. So on the mesh, I'm going to hit control tab, leave pose mode. I'm going to save my file, and I'm going to grab this mesh, and then I'm going to shift right click to select my armature. I'm going to hit control P, which lets me set a parent to the armature. I can either set it to object, such as when I move the armature in object mode, it'll move the rig, but I want to go ahead and have the armature deform. Now, normally when we do this, we set it to use with automatic weights, so it automatically assigns vertices to the bones based on their weights or kind of their proximity and topology and whatnot. But we don't actually want that to happen because since this is mechanical, we want to be sure that we don't have any mixing of weights uh, and we want things just very clear cut on what they're assigned. So we're just going to do empty groups. What this does is in the vertex groups of the, the mesh, it's gone and, and added a group for every single bone that we have. And what this then allows us to do is, you know, n nothing is assigned to this. So if we go into pose mode, you'll notice and we move this. Um, oh. Oh, I know why. Okay, so currently with the armature, one of the default things in the armature modifier is to work with envelopes. So we want to just disable that. And now if I rotate this in pose mode, 
you notice some things are still working. Hold on. If we just disable this, we should see this then not changing anything. Oh, okay. So <laughs> what has happened, or what I did that was rather silly, is before I added in or a Applied these, I actually forgot to remove the vertex groups from the previous rig. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to step back and I'm just going to remove all vertex groups. Then I'm also going to go in and delete this armature. Also delete our old armature as well. And now if I hit Control Tab, select this, then select this, hit Control P, add in empty groups, make sure that the bone envelopes are disabled. If I now go into pose mode you'll notice that nothing works because now I've only got the vertex groups that I just added, but nothing is assigned to them. So the mistake that I made was that the vertex groups from my previous armature were, were still added in the mesh and were still being picked up because some of the bone names are the same. So now what I can do, now that I fixed that little mix up, I can go and select the mesh. I'm gonna hit control tab to go into pose or into weight paint mode, as you can see here. And then I'm going to select the bone that I want to apply things to. So first I'll go ahead and select my main bone and then I will hit tab to go into edit mode. And so this is actually, let me step back. This is a kind of a trick, a little trick that you would never really realize unless you figured it out or it showed to you. So on the mesh, if my armature is in object mode on the mesh, I can go into weight paint mode, but I can't select the armature. You know, I can just switch to the armature, but I can't select the bones in it. But if you select the armature, hit control tab to go into uh, pose mode, then you select the mesh in weight paint mode, you can then actually select those bones while staying in weight paint mode for the mesh. But the even cooler part about this is if I select this bone and hit tab to go into edit mode, what it's done is automatically selected the correct vertex group associated with that bone such that now I can just select what I want and assign it correctly. So, you know, I'll select this piece, I'll select this one, just using L to select them. I'll go in here and maybe I will select this piece and this piece. Uh, I will go ahead and select this one and this one along with this one here. And maybe I will select the armature and disable X-ray. There we go. And then maybe I will also go ahead and select this one as well. And then I can just click assign. And now if I leave edit mode, I can even control this rig while still in weight paint mode and it just works. So there's, you know, as long as you do it in that order, it works great. So now I'll go ahead and select the tip bone. And this is where some of the, not trickery necessarily, but you know, the tricky aspect comes in is on this bone, what I want to happen, make sure you can see it's selected here, is I only want to select the tips of the, of the cylinder along with the top row of the actual cylinder rod. So now I'll assign these, and if I now grab that bone, you'll notice it only moves the tip. But what this means is if I go ahead and just move this, you notice it's just pulling the tip along and not doing anything else. And so th what this is going to allow me to do is rather than the cylinder rod actually sliding in and, in and out, it's actually just going to stretch. Now, this is not a perfect solution in all cases. Since this cylinder is just metal and I don't have any UV textures applied to it, it'll work great. But if you had UV textures applied to it for, you know, if you wanted some grunge mats or something like that in there, you would actually need that to slide. Not a big deal to make a slide, but just a little trickier. But just be aware that for today's tutorial, what we're doing, our cylinder rod is actually stretching rather than uh, sliding in and out. So uh, next, I'm going to grab the, the base bone. And I want to assign all the other parts of the cylinder. So I'll grab all of these along with the bottom rows and these two pieces. And I'll click Assign on that. So now if we select this in here, you can see that works very nicely. Now I realized I missed a piece on the main arm. So you notice as I rotate this, that piece gets lagged behind. So I'll just select this. And on arm point zero one, I'll just, actually I'll select 
that one as well. I'll click assign. Okay. So now if I rotate this, you can see it works very nicely. So now I can go ahead and do the same thing on this one. I'll go in and select that. I'll select that and select that and that and that. And this should be piston zero to base. Click assign. I'll leave edit mode, select this bone, re-enter edit mode, deselect all of my vertices. And since I selected the bone, now my, my correct vertex group is already selected, so I can just click assign. There we go. Now I'll go down here, I'll select uh, arm zero two, and I'll select all this in here, along with that piece, and that piece, and that piece, and that piece. And I'll go ahead and assign these ones as well and click assign. There we go. Now I'll select this cylinder base, hit tap bone edit mode, be sure I deselect all my vertices. I'll select that and that and that and that and that. There we go. Click assign. Again, do it with this tip. Selecting all that in there, go ahead and click assign. And then I'll grab that little bone, hit tab, hit Alt H, make sure every, or actually, before I do that, I'm going to hit A, and then I'll hit Alt H since those were hidden. Then I can just hit Shift L to deselect that piece. Now this is all selected, I'll click assign, and then I'll go ahead and just hide that, hit tab to leave edit mode, grab this one here, select this and this, and assign. And then I'll select this bone here. And I might just well go ahead and deselect that. And I want to select this piece and this piece and this one. And in fact, on this bone, I'm actually just going to assign the entire bucket to it and click assign. So now if I grab this, you'll notice everything works, but this bone is not actually deforming anything. And I believe that is that. So now if I just, just make sure that I'm not leaving any pieces behind, looks good. Hit control tab, leave edit mode, and let's try out our rig. So I'm first just going to go ahead and to make this nice and organized, I'm going to select uh, all my bones except for my three main control bones. Here I'm going to hit M, which will change the bone layers, not the regular layer. Since I'm in pose mode, I'm just going to move them over to layer two. Okay. And so now I've only got my control bones. I can go ahead and set this to maybe say X-ray and I'll change the display mode to stick so that we can see the, our arm very easily. Hit go into full screen mode, maybe grab this one. You notice if I rotate this around the X-axis, it all works. Go in here, all works. And then this one all works beautifully. And so the last step uh, that I did on the test piece was I went ahead and added in some limit rotation constraints to these bones so that they could only rotate so far. So on this one, I'll go ahead and add in a limit rotation constraint. And what I will first want to do is go ahead and just hit R and rotate this. And I can see that it would rotate up to maybe right about there. And so, you know, we're just going to call this 32 degrees. And so I'll go ahead and set around the X axis in local space. The, the maximum is 32 degrees then minimum would be down to about right there and we'll just call that say 30 degrees so the minimum is negative 30 and i can then enable limit x and now if i rotate this it stops there rotate it down it stops right there so then i can do the same thing with these ones so i'll first rotate this down and it would go to maybe right about there which is we'll just call it negative 36 degrees is our whoops that's going to be our minimum so our limit rotation, our minimum is negative 36. Set that to local space. And then our maximum is say something right in there. We'll go ahead and call that 85. Then I can limit that. And oops, maybe it's higher than that. We'll do 100. Let's disable that for a moment. We'll rotate this up. Oh, 
If we double tap X, we can go into the local X axis. No, switch into local mode. And then we can go around the local X axis and we can see that's 90. 90. And there you go. So that works. And well, that's odd. Limit rotation around the X, convert. Should this be post space? Or world space? This is going negative, negative 36. Well, that is weird. Let's see, what did I do differently? That one goes right up. To 30 and stops. This one goes right down to 32 and stops. Is my let's see. Sometimes you can check if your rolls are messed messed up on these. Sometimes that can have an effect, and it looks like that is the case. So if I hit Control R, 180, flip that around, now this should work better. So let's hit Alt R, redo the roll on that. If I take this up, it goes up to 36. We'll call this uh, negative 90, and then this one will be 36. That should then work. So the maximum here should then be say 12 to right about there and then the rotation there we'll go ahead and call it say negative 120 there you can see that then works perfectly and lastly, on this one, we can go right around to right about there, so negative 50. Uh, limit rotation, minimum, it's negative 50. The maximum then would be something right about in there. We'll just call it 50. Limit X, rotate around, stops there. Rotate this around, stops there. Maybe I went a little far. Oh, and this should be local space. Take that back, that forward, and there we go. So that's it. That's how to rig the excavator arm, or this is kind of our uh, rigging a piston round two. You know, we haven't looked at anything like hoses or whatnot, but we've got the pistons all working very nicely. So we can go right in, animate this, pose it, and never once do we have to worry about any of the pistons or the more mechanical mechanisms Nisms that otherwise would be very difficult to animate. So hope you enjoyed and again, you know as always if you have any comments or questions Feel free to leave them in the comments or send a support ticket to support at cgcookie.com. Thanks so much